uh, <laughs> dealing with me, and he prompted me to uh, present this message tonight. And really, it's it's not just for you, but it's also for me uh, that he was he was prompting me. This is what we need to be uh, thinking about, and this is what we need to be meditating on. And so that's the foundation and and the reason for this message today. He said uh, that we were to build all waste places. And, and so I, I take that to mean uh, that we're to restore some things. Some, some things have been lost in our lives and stolen, and uh, we've suffered wounds and trauma and, and different kinds of things. And so that's where you start. You start in restoring what uh, things within yourself, and, and then you go on and you begin to restore things outside. And, and so we're going to see that. And, and so uh, of course, the uh, initial basis for this message is, as Sherry said, Isaiah 58, about uh, restoring old waste places. But I, I want to say the specific uh, uh, verse I want to keep uh, as the core of this is something about Job. You know, Job lost everything. He lost all of his fortune. He lost his children. And uh, he just lost everything. But there's this really important uh, verse in uh, Job uh, chapter 42, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read it. Job 42, verse 10. The Lord also restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends, and the Lord increased double all that Job had. Okay, so here, here's a principle. Uh, the restoration came when he prayed. Hallelujah. And so that's the reason I I uh, wrote, sat down and wrote out some things about prayers and decrees uh, because we want to restore some things. And, and uh, you know, when uh, Sherry and I are out and we see children, uh, we, we just have, it's so wonderful just to see their spirit, uh, how free they are and how uh, lively and joyful they are. There was a, a little... Uh, P, uh, a little group of uh, children uh, from, uh, uh, let's say, pre -K, pre maybe pre-K or, or kindergarten or something that uh, walked across the street uh, in front of us the other day, and it was so cute just looking at them. They were, they were just uh, they enjoying were life. Up and down. They were waving. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it gave us great it, joy. And every time I think about it, those little children, it, it makes uh, me joyful. And so I think about that, uh, that little girl skip and little boys run. run. And uh, what happens and, and why, do, why do we quit skipping and why do we keep, quit uh, running? Uh, something has happened. Some, we've lost something. We've lost mm -hmm. uh, something in our lives has changed from the time we were those little carefree children, just full of joy and a bubbling and overflowing. Uh, with joy and, and just excitement and amazement uh, at everything going on, but we've lost something. And so this message is really for all of us about uh, mm -hmm. God wants to restore uh, some things in our lives. So I want you to remember this particular verse, Job uh, 42.10, it says Job, that God restored everything to uh, Job when he prayed. Yeah. So that's a core yeah. uh, scripture for this uh, message tonight. And you might say, well, that's Job. Uh, yeah. What does that have to do with me? But there's a couple of verses that really came alive to me. Uh, and one was in Acts uh, 10, 34, and it was Peter uh, speaking. And he said, uh, uh, I realize that God is no uh, respecter of person, shows no partiality shows no partiality uh, and no favoritism. Mm. Okay, so if you can find somebody in the Bible that God restored, uh, he'll do the same for you. Hallelujah. Because we also know from Hebrews 13.8 uh, mm. that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, Dang. and forever. So if he ever did anything, if the Lord ever did anything for anybody, if he ever restored uh, anybody, he, he will do it today for you, Hallelujah. and he shows no partiality, no favoritism. So that's all you have to do. You just have to find one verse in the Bible mm -hmm. that uh, that the Lord restored, and and the exact one is here in uh, Job. He lost everything, 
all of his wealth and all and all of his children. He just lost everything. But when he prayed, God restored them. Hallelujah. And so we've all lost things. And that's what I tried to write in these uh, verses that I shared with you. And you, if you had them there uh, beside you, you might want to follow along. But we'll talk more about those later. And, and even if there was nothing in the Bible about restoration, we can still go from the fact that with God, all, all things, things are, are possible. possible. That's Mark 10. Uh, Mark 9. Mark uh, says, with God, all things are possible. Now, uh, I want you to see mm -hmm. with God, do you, mm -hmm. you believe that? With God, mm -hmm. I believe it. all things are possible. So if you need restoration, if you've lost something, if you've been wounded, if you something is broken, uh, something has slipped through your hand, uh, it can be restored. And, and we don't even have to have verses about restoration. We could just do it from this. We could have a, a basis for it here. With God, all things, things are, are possible. possible. That's Mark, what, Mark 10 what, Sherry? Mark 10, uh, 27. Mark 10, 27. So with God, all things are possible. Amen. But look at this verse. Look, Mark 9. Mm. Uh, Mark 9 says, let's go back. Mark 9 says. Mark 9, 23. 3, 23 says, all things are possible to him who believes. Uh -huh. well, that's right. How many people believe that? Do you I believe, believe that? You believe that all things are possible to them that believe. So you can have everything restored just on the basis of these two verses. You are with God, so all things are possible. And you are a believer, so all things are possible. So you can, you can restore all, all things. But I, I'm really focusing on restoration tonight, which is rebuilding uh, old waste places. And that can be old waste places in our lives. Uh, because if we're not skipping for the girls, if we're not skipping, maybe you've lost something. Maybe something's been broken, mm -hmm. uh, some kind of a wound or something. The, the the you boy. stolen something. Yeah, uh, and for the boys, if uh, uh, and the men, if if you're not running uh, and, and you're not full of joy and overflowing with uh, life <laughs> and excitement, that then perhaps you've lost something. Maybe the devil has stolen something. And so these are the things we're talking about: restoration. And uh, Jesus said something that was uh, phenomenal, really. <clears throat> and he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. I'm in Matthew 17. And he went up on the Mount of Transfiguration with his uh, three disciples, uh, Peter, James, and John. And, and they saw Elijah and they saw Moses because they were in a, a portal, really. It was a, 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 an area where they could see into the supernatural realm and they saw different dimensions. And there they saw uh, uh, Moses and Elijah. And, and then when they were coming down the mountain, this is Jesus, Peter, James, and John. The disciples asked Jesus, why do they say that Elijah must come? And, and uh, before, before you, and, and he said, uh, um, Elijah comes to restore all things, and he's already come. So I'll ask Sherry to read this first, Matthew 7. And his disciples asked him, why then do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And he answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. But I say to you that Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they wanted. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Okay, so what he's talking about then is John the Baptist. So John the Baptist has already mm -hmm. come. Now Jesus said he's going to restore all things. But let's go back to the prophecy that said John the Baptist was coming. And that's in Malachi. Uh, Malachi uh, chapter 4. 4 verses 5 and 6. said that God is going to send Elijah to restore things. So let's look at this. Behold, I'm going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers back to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers so that I will not come and strike the land with complete destruction. 
Okay, wow. so we're not under a curse because uh, the spirit of Elijah came on uh, on John the Baptist. Now, what was the spirit of Elijah? It was the spirit of prophecy or the spirit of the prophet. The prophetic spirit mm. came on uh, John the Baptist because Jesus said John the Baptist is the greatest prophet. It, 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 so he was a prophet. So John the Baptist is a prophet. And uh, we don't actually see uh, a man named Elijah out there. What we see is that John the Baptist had the same spirit of the prophet mm -hmm. that Elijah had. Now, Elijah, uh, I mean, he raised the dead. He called down fire. He did wonderful things. But uh, Jesus said John the Baptist is, a, is greater than even Elijah. He's greater than all the prophets. He's a prophet. Yeah. And he's already come. Okay. You know, I have I have something I believe from the Spirit of God here, and that is Elijah turned when that fire fell, and the people of God saw that there was only one God. Their hearts were turned back to the Lord, and they fell to to the earth and began to worship Him and and honor Him. And that John the Baptist came preaching and teaching and and his message was repentance or turn back to the lord okay so john the baptist came before jesus and uh, in uh, matthew 3 and i'll ask you to read this i believe we have matthew 3 1 through 3 okay now in those days john the baptist came preaching in the wilderness of judea saying repent okay for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is the one referred to by Isaiah, the prophet, when he said, the voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his pathway straight. Okay. Hallelujah. So what Jesus said on the Mount of Transfiguration as they started down the mountain, he said, Elijah had to come and he has come. And he turned the hearts of the people back to God. And when he did that, Jesus said he, he came to restore all things. Mm, so that true. same spirit, the spirit of the prophet was upon Elijah and to, to restore all things. So uh, how many knows then that, that it's possible now uh, for the restoration of all things? You don't have to wait till you get to heaven. Jesus is saying he's already come and, and he, and he, and he came to restore all things. That's the spirit of the prophet. And, and so we look back to yesterday when she, uh, the Lord spoke to Sherry and through Sherry that we were rebuilding the old waste places. So all things can be restored. Oh, mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We don't have to wait until we're in heaven. He says, this is something that has already happened, the spirit of the prophet. And, and the spirit of the prophet helps us restore all things. And, and so Elijah came to restore all things, to turn the hearts of the people back to God. And in doing that, all things are being restored. And now we've got the spirit of the prophet on Sherry. She's a prophet. Okay, and she's saying, Hey, this is the time. This is the time for rebuilding the old waves places. Amen. This is the time. So now we've got a, a prophetic voice saying, yes, This is the least. time of the restoration. And, and so that's why we're presenting this message today because the spirit of the prophet is crying, This is the yes. time for the restoration of all things. And preparing the way of the Lord. So prepare that way of the Lord. Now, Mm. If we're going to prepare the way of the Lord, we have to believe the prophetic. We have to act on the prophetic. See, when there is a prophetic word, that is a prophetic call to action. Mm, so we need, we need to do something. Now, let's go back to the, our beginning scripture on Job 42 that said, God restored all things to mm -hmm. Job when he prayed. So here it is. He's no respecter of persons. He shows no partiality, no favoritism. He'll do the same thing for you because he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. 
the Lord does not change. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, with that background, we're going to look at three specific verses about restoration, specific restoration. And we've got to we'll start with Psalm uh, 23, 5. And what does that say? It says Psalm 23, 3. three he, res sorry. he restores my soul. Okay. Hallelujah. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Okay. The Lord is my shepherd. I, I shall, shall not want. want. He restores my soul. Hallelujah. I shall not end up here. That's, uh, okay. So there is restoration for our mind, our thinking, or renew our mind. Restoration for mm. that. Okay. But the Lord also, here's another promise. That's a promise. Here's another promise that he will restore your health and your healing. Let, let's Jeremiah read. 30, verse 17. I love this. For I will restore you to health, and I will heal you of your wounds, declares the Lord, because they have called you an outcast, saying it is Zion. No one cares for her. Oh, hallelujah. So we're looking at very specific hallelujah. kinds of restoration now. We had a verse on restoration of our soul. That's our mind, our will, emotion. Now, uh, next, we had the restoration of our health. health. And now we're moving to restoration of finances. Mm -hmm. And this is Joel. Joel uh, 2.25. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, and the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, so, Hallelujah. So you're going to restore all things, and that relates to finances. Restore what's uh, where you've lost finances. Okay. So let's just recap what we're doing tonight. We have a basic principle. God restored Job everything. Restored everything for Job when he prayed. Okay. So... I have written down some prayers. And so we're going to go through some of these. We don't have to go through all of them. I sent this to everyone last night that was on the on the email list. And uh, uh, and so basically, I, I talked about seven different areas. And I'm, I'm saying this is all because of the prompting of the Holy Spirit that I could easily have just left this prophetic word that <clears throat> God gave us yesterday, that he's rebuilding old waste places, which is a type of restoration. And it starts in several different areas and it can be in, in several different areas. I listed seven different areas. I started with the spirit man because mm -hmm. that's your core. That's your, that's the very beginning. It has to start there. And so your restoration needs to start there. Then it moves number two. I'm talking about the mind or restoring the mind. And then I'm talking about uh, the body and that's healing. And we've already talked about some mm -hmm. verses that, that relate to that. And, and we've also, I also talked about uh, our gifts and anointing. Perhaps, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you've had some gifts and anointing, but you haven't really uh, operated in those. And perhaps you've even uh, heard a calling from God in those areas, but you haven't operated in that. Another one I had was about uh, the areas of influence. Now, what are your areas of influence? Well, obviously, that's your family, but it's much yeah. more than that. It's also in your workplace Place. and in your community and uh, whatever, in your, church congregation. whatever your area of influence is, you can have restoration in those areas. And you might say, well, in my uh, on my job, uh, we've lost a lot of people and and, and things uh, have um, gone from bad to worse or whatever. But but see, well, you can restore in those areas you have influence, okay? And then there can also be restoration and prayers in the area of people who do not even know God. This may be some of your family mm -hmm. members, and they may not be right under your uh, roof. Uh, they may be in other places, even a uh, Back around in China. the world, even around the world, but you can pray uh, and, and for restoration in those areas. And then finally, I pray to, I have a section on prayers for the kingdom to bring forth the kingdom rule on the earth. Okay, so that's seven different areas. And 
Uh, I'll let Cherry choose what she wants to read here, but these are basically two areas, prayers and decrees, okay? So we have already heard a prophetic word. This is the time to rebuild old waste places, and that, and we have to start uh, in our inner man, in the inside of us, and then we work that out even to the point that we impact other people's lives. Now, these are just, I'd say, a starting point. If you want to agree with any of these or you want to X any of these out, it doesn't matter. It's whatever you're uh, comfortable with, what you're being led by the Spirit of God. But, did you, yeah. but did you see God restored Job when he prayed? Hallelujah. So I am offering you some possible prayers. Uh, you might want to personalize them, make them more specific to your situation, whatever you want to do with them. These, these are offered to you as a guide on how you might pray. Don't you want to be like Job and have everything restored when you pray? Well, here are some examples of ways you might want to pray. And so that's the purpose of these seven things, which I've shared with you in your email. And if you haven't found them in your email, uh, I've sent them to you. And if anybody has uh, uh, discarded that and they want me to send it back, I I'll be glad to send it again. But th these are just a starting point. You can do whatever you want to do with them, but you can pray this daily. If particularly you look at where your areas are that you want restoration, is it in your relationships? Well, pray in that area, the areas where you have influence. Uh, okay, so it might be with uh, siblings. It might be with children or parents. You might want to restore. So Elijah came, the spirit of the prophet is here. He already came. Jesus said he's already come. Uh, and it was the voice crying in the wilderness, so it's the prophetic voice, and and we're uh, related to the prophetic voice. Sherry's here; that she has a prophetic voice, and he is saying this is the time that we can have restoration in our lives, in our spirit, soul, body, in our uh, where we have uh, uh, influence, and that could be broad, broad areas. And so you can take any of these, but I want Sherry to read, uh, and not just read, but... No, I'm not going to just read. But to pray and decree mm -hmm. things about restoration for all of us. And, and, and you might think, well, I haven't lost anything. Well, if you're a woman, when did you lose your skip? And when did you lose your joy? And when or, 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 do you still have the carefree... A joy and lifestyle that you had when you were a little child. You know, Jesus said, uh, we have to come into the kingdom like a little oh, child. child. Yeah. Or if you're a man and you thought, well, I, I don't run anymore. I don't have that joy. And well, you've lost it somewhere. Let, let's, it's possible. All things are possible mm -hmm. to him who believes to bring it back, to restore it. And God is saying, this is the time of restoration. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you to just pray and decree uh, what is in her spirit then. Okay, with the first one about your your spirit man, uh, the what just jumps off the page at me is anything, any power that has uh, brought you, uh, has vexed, uh, your your spirit that has vexed you that means that has troubled you or giving you um, a grief uh, any power that has tried to come to steal kill and destroy uh, your uh, your spirit man from growing I come against that power and principality right now in the name of Jesus and I say that your spirit man, is growing and that you are receiving uh, from the Holy Spirit and that you are expanding uh, the, uh, the innermost part of your being, that it is getting larger and larger and the Holy Spirit is taking more space uh, 
in your spirit man. Uh, but that was uh, exactly uh, the vexation is, is gone in Jesus' name. I decree it to be gone. Hallelujah. In the mind, uh, uh, what comes uh, to me is the, is the spirit of fear and also the spirit of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. So I declare right now that you have clarity of mind in the name of Jesus and also that the spirit of fear has left you and the power of, uh, it says you, that he has given you love, a uh, power of and a sound mind in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, uh, for giving us that sound mind. Hallelujah. When we get to the body, uh, what comes uh, to me right now is that, that we need to be walking in divine health, not always trying to get a healing, not always trying to get over a sickness or a disease, but that we that we walk every day. And I decree this right now, that you walk in divine healing every single day that you're here on this earth because healing is within you. Healing is in your body. It's in the cells of your body. And so in the name of Jesus, I declare that you are whole. I declare uh, that you have healing, uh, the blood of Jesus running through your body and every vein, every artery is open and clear and the, it, the blood is just moving through your body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And also here, it says that we have overcome weakness. We have overcome weakness. And it says, those that are weak say, I am strong. That's what it says in the book of Joel, doesn't it? It says, let the weak say, I am strong. Hallelujah. And so it also says, that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit is running through your whole body, hallelujah, that you've given it liberty to go into your muscles. You've given it liberty to go into your kidneys, into your liver, uh, into your uh, just every part of your body, then your body is whole. And it's holy because the Holy Spirit has taken over your whole body in Jesus' name. Now, when I get down to the gifts and the anointing, I was praying about this this afternoon. And I said, Lord, you know, I want those gifts to be activated and released in, in your people. And he said, then tell the people, listen to what he says, tell the people to ask me, for more of my love. So I speak over you that you have God's love inside of you and that you want more of God's love because the gifts operate by love. And the anointing destroys every yoke because of the love of God. And so I speak over you and I declare and decree over you that you have the love of God in your, in your thinking. You have the love of God in your body. You have the love of God in the, the gifts and the callings of, of, of the Holy Spirit. And the anointing has arisen in you and is pouring out of you uh, an overflow. I was talking with Sister Becky this afternoon, and we agreed that we are in the in the season of overflow. That the Spirit is overflowing us, that His love is overflowing us, Hallelujah! And so we can we can drink it up. We can we can ask for it, you know. And and I've told this story before that when we opened up the mission downtown Athens. The people started coming in to the to to be fed and to hear the word of God, and they were they were dirty, they were smelly, 
uh, they were, uh, they were, some of them even came in with bare feet, uh, dirty feet. And, um, and, and, and I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, you know, they, they don't look like me. They don't act like me. They don't smell like me. Um, I have shoes on my feet and some of them don't have any shoes on their feet. And I said, I need more of your love in order to minister to these people. And supernaturally, he poured in that love. I can't tell you how I got it because it was all the Lord. He gave it to me. He poured it into me. And so he will pour it into you as well. Okay, and then if we go to the next area, uh, and that's our area of influence. Um, and Brother Fred said that might be our family, our church family, uh, our workplace, uh, our friends, our relatives, um, those in the community, uh, those that uh, are in the in the stores that we go into. Uh, there's there's many areas of influence, and uh, but I ask right now that the Lord will show you the areas and the territories where you have influence, and then I ask for the Lord to increase your authority and to increase your power in those territories in Jesus name, that your words will be with more power, that your actions will be with more power in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We do not want our words to fall to the ground and not be beneficial. So I speak that the words that come out of your mouth will be powerful and bold and will hit the mark and will be influential in any area that you are in, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And then we get to outreach. And I think about where Jesus, where there was a great feast and, and dinner that was prepared. And the, the master said, you know, uh, go and invite these to come. And there were so many that gave excuses why they couldn't be there. And then he said, go into the highways. And I believe it says the hedges uh, in the King James Version. It says, go into the, the highways and the hedges or the byways and compel them to come into the kingdom of God. And I believe that outreach also is where Jesus said, I was hungry and you fed me and I was naked and you clothed me and I was thirsty and you gave me to drink and I was in prison and you came to visit me, and I was sick, and you came to visit me, and this is outreach, and so I speak and declare over you right now that there will be an increase in your sensitivity to those who are hurting, those who are wounded, those who need uh, loving care uh, given to them, that you will lay down your agenda and that you will pick up God's agenda and you will do what he wants you to do to reach out to people and bring them in to the kingdom of God in Jesus name. And then the seventh one is the kingdom rule. And I'm going to read this one. Finally, Father, we decree the releasement of your kingdom rule. Now, what is that? That's the Lord's prayer. Let the will of the Father come to earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Manifest your kingdom authority that resides within us so that the evil spirits, the powers and dominions and principalities will begin to fall. Hallelujah. When we, you know, what, what is this all about here? What is number seven or the kingdom rule all about? It's about intercession. How do you pull down something that you cannot see? It's only by the spirit that you do that. You do that. Now, you can see the effects of the evil spirits. Alcoholism, 
drug addiction, pornography, uh, immorality, fornication, all of those are just um, uh, expressions, expressions <laughs> are manifestations of the evil that's out there. So in Jesus' name, it says, when we decree your will, it will happen. These principalities and powers will come down in the name of Jesus. When you decree, uh, it will happen. So put your decrees in us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray these things. And so we ask the Lord concerning the kingdom rule to show us what principalities and powers need to be brought down in Jesus' name. And we can command them because of the authority that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God, we can pull down those strongholds. You know, it says that Jesus already made a show of them openly. All principalities and powers. He, he, when he went to hell for you and I and got the keys of death, hell, and the grave, then he put a stop to those powers. And so all you have to do is say, this is what Jesus did. Jesus did this to you. Jesus crushed the head of the snake. Jesus uh, cut off the head of the dragon. And so just begin to let the Holy Spirit uh, use you to bring kingdom rule uh, in the earth. Hallelujah.